Hi, this is Jason, Chief Technical Analyst with Toro Alerts with your weekly market update. We're going to take a look at a variety of uh, charts that I'm looking at to kind of take a look at what the markets are telling us. Uh, we're starting out with the S&P 500, the SPY chart. Uh, we can see that in, going into Friday we had a pretty strong bounce, uh, but we still stayed below that 200-day moving average, and so I'm really looking for uh, price action on Monday to see what happens. If we get back above that 200-day and above this uh, key trend line here, then that would certainly be a little more bullish signal, but uh, what I'd probably expect is probably a uh, reversal from this and continued selling pressure. I'd be looking for support if we'd continue to sell off right around this 413 level. Uh, if we break down further, then I'd be looking for some support right around the 385, uh, 400 level. Uh, take a look at the NASDAQ. Uh, we've seen some uh, more aggressive selling in the technology and uh, NASDAQ index. Uh, we also had a nice bounce today, but also well below the 200 and actually well below or just below the uh, Fibonacci level here. And so um, that's also somewhat bearish looking that uh, we'll want to watch that key, uh, key level on Monday. If we get above that, that'll be a little bit more bullish signal. Uh, but I'm still expecting some continued selling pressure in the NASDAQ. And uh, we could see that sell off really all the way down to 300 in the worst case scenario. Or we could see some uh, support right around the 310, 320 level. Taking a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Averages. Uh, same story here uh, across all sectors we had a nice bounce today uh, but again below the 200 day moving average uh, still in a bearish territory and i would expect some more selling pressure here as well uh, we've held support here uh, multiple times all the way back in uh, april of 2021 back in june of 2021 and uh, just recently and so it'll be interesting to see if we can hold that level um, the, the industrial average is uh, typically more value oriented and so it's not getting beat up as much in this uh, raising rates interest uh, environment and so if we can continue to hold that, then that might actually be a support level for the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average. If that does not hold, then I'd be looking for a support around 313, 315 area. Taking a look at the transports, uh, we're just below the 50-week uh, moving average. Uh, so that's certainly a, a bit of a bear signal, but with this candlestick, we had a um, kind of, when, when you see, we see these candlesticks, that's typically a um, market, the price action is telling you you're just not really sure what's gonna happen. And so we want to watch this closely. Next week we could bounce back up above the 50 or we could continue to see some selling pressure. I'll be looking for support if we see selling pressure at that 14, 333 level. And uh, if we see that fail, then we could see quite a bit more damage in the transportation sector. Uh, and I'd be looking for a variety of different moving averages as our next levels of support. Take a look at the Russell 3000 index. That's uh, 3000 stocks in the market uh, under the New York Stock Exchange. A much broader example of uh, the market as opposed to just the S&P 500. And when we zoom out and take a look at this chart, you can see it's been in a nice channel uh, all the way back since the financial collapse back in 2008, 2009. And uh, every time other than in 09 when we broke below the 50 period moving average, um, we've hit this middle trend line channel every time. And so um, we've done that once, twice, three times, four times, and then I'm thinking we're looking at a fifth here. Obviously this time we blew way past that. That was the uh, COVID crash. Uh, but basically we've got quite a bit of historical evidence to show us that uh, if we can't get back above this 50 period moving average pretty quickly, then I would expect some continued selling pressure in the broader stock market. And um, taking a look at this, we're looking at uh, about 10, 12% potential downside further in the broader stock market. Taking a look at the Russell 1000, that's the large caps. We're just around that 50 week uh, period moving average right now. And so that'll be really interesting to see if we can get above that next week. If it does, that'll give us some indication that large caps may be recovering. Um, if it doesn't, then it's, since it is right at that uh, 50 week moving average, uh, it could go either way. If we continue to uh, sell off, then we'd be looking for the 100 day moving average uh, for our next level of support. Take a look at the Russell 2000, our small cap index. Uh, we broke below a key trend line level here, and uh, so we're expecting some continued selling pressure. Uh, I'd really be looking for the Russell 2000 and the small cap to sell off down to this trend line here. Uh, so from current levels, we're looking at about another 10%, 10, 12% sell off, uh, which also kind of lines up with uh, the, what we're looking at for a possible overall sell off in the markets uh, before we find a bottom. 
uh, taking a look at the consumer discretionary versus uh, consumer staples. Uh, this is an equally weighted ratio chart. And so what this shows us is when the, chart, the stock, or when the price action is moving up, we are seeing um, a bullish risk on environment. When the chart is going down, people are getting defensive and they're buying sectors like uh, utilities and consumer staples and things of that nature. And so uh, we've seen that break down below this key level and we are continuing to sell off. One thing I'd want to point out here is when we're looking at the weekly candle, uh, this week alone we shot right back up to this key support line, failed and then dropped back pretty significantly all within the same candlestick of this week. And so that's also a pretty bearish looking signal for me. And so I'm looking for continued defensive posturing in the market. Take a look at the value line geometric index. This is actually a uh, equally weighted uh, chart of about 1,700 North American stocks. So it's got uh, not just US, but Canada and others. And uh, this is a really great representation of kind of overall market health because it does include stocks outside of the US as well. And, um, and just a very broad uh, collection of stocks. And uh, you can see we kind of broke above uh, this level here back in March of last year, and then really been trading in a range this whole time. We had a false breakout here, and just like with the uh, small caps, when you have a failed breakout, you oftentimes get fast moves down to the downside. And so we had a pretty quick sell off back up to that trend line support and then sold off again. I mean, this chart looks almost exactly like the small caps. And so uh, we're going to be watching this one closely. I'd be looking for support. Uh, the first potential level of support at the 592 level. Uh, if that breaks down, then I'd be looking at uh, support closer down to the 550, 555 range. Aussie dollar, Japanese yen is a chart I love to look at on a regular basis. It's the two currencies. Uh, divided by each other. So Australian dollar is typically a risk on currency. Japanese yen is typically a defensive currency. And so when we see inflows into Australian dollar or Japanese yen, that tells us something. And so when we see the Australian dollar take off and that's the chart going up to from the left to the right, then that's a bullish signal. And you typically want to be buying risk asset, ass, assets and stocks. Uh, as you can see, we've kind of been trading around in a choppy area since February of last year, which is really when the, uh, the riskiest of um, stocks kind of peaked. And we really did have a pretty sideways uh, choppy market last year. And this uh, graph actually really kind of shows that really well uh, in the currency uh, pairs. And so we want to watch this closely. We've held this support line here right around 78.50. If this breaks down and sells off further, then that would be a warning sign that we're expecting some continued pain and, and worse selling in the markets. If we can hold support here, then that might also be an, an indicator that we're getting close to a bottom and that we can hopefully be turning back up for a resumption of the bull market. Uh, also taking a look at IWF divided, divided by IWD. Uh, this is growth versus value. And so when uh, this chart is going up, that means growth is the sector you want to be in. When it's going down, it means value is the sectors you want to be in. Uh, we've had a couple of pretty sharp, sharp sell-offs. Uh, we hit this trend line here back in September, and then value was a great sector to be in uh, from about August of 20 uh, down to May of 2021, and then it flipped again, and then it was time to be back into growth. So it's been a bit choppy here, but if you look at it on a longer-term basis, you can really see that for quite a few years, really all the way back to about 2006, uh, all the way up to September of 2020, growth was the place to be. Uh, the NASDAQ and all growth sectors were really where you wanted to have your capital invested. Uh, but we have peaked out here with a double top. We've sold off, we broke below key support level. And so we're gonna wanna watch that really closely. If we uh, fall back down below the support line, uh, then that would definitely be a, uh, a signal that uh, value uh, might be the stronger play in the short term and that would make sense with a uh, rising interest rate environment. Jumping over to the commodities, commodities index, the CRB index, you can take a look since the COVID crash back in uh, March and April. Uh, commodities have done nothing but just rip. Commodities have been one of the best sectors, if not the best sector uh, in all markets uh, for tradable assets and it continues to be an extremely strong sector. You can see we've got this nice steep trend line going up. It has not broke. It's held support a couple of times already and it just continues to rip. So I'm looking for commodities to continue to go up in the short term. Uh, I'd be looking at uh, some potential resistance hitting the 313 level or the 366 level. Uh, let's take a look at the emerging markets versus the SPY next. Uh, we had a, a couple of weeks recently up until just this week where the emerging markets were actually starting to outperform uh, the S&P 500. 
And so that typically is a signal that it's time to start looking elsewhere outside of the U.S. for some stock opportunities. But we did hit this key trend line here and started to reverse pretty aggressively this week. Really gave up a big chunk of last week's gains. And uh, we'll want to watch that closely. And if we look at it and zoom out a little further, you can see we've been in a pretty steady downtrend as far as emerging markets versus U.S. stocks really since uh, July of 14 and even before that. And so, uh, but this is a key trend line that, uh, that I'm watching for. If we can see a break out above this wedge, then that would really be a strong signal that uh, some emerging markets and places other than the US might be a good place to look for some stocks. Also, if we take a look at the VEU, uh, which is the All World Index XUS, so we have no US stocks in there. Uh, we've got a big uh, topping pattern here. We've broken down a key level of support that was resistance back in 18. And so this is also not a very bullish looking chart right now. And so I'd expect some continued selling pressure abroad. Uh, let's take a look at the interest rates because those have certainly been uh, a talk of the town recently. Taking a look at the two year, we've had a huge spike this week. You know, we, we at one point were as low as uh, just below 1% as high as about 1.22% and we've settled out at around 1.16, 1.17. Uh, so the two years been rising rapidly as we can see, really probably right around September it started taking off and it's just been ripping since then. Uh, and so we wanna keep an eye on that. That's definitely obviously showing us that we're, uh, the market's expecting continued uh, rises in interest rates and the Fed's already signaled that they're expecting an interest rate hike in March. Uh, taking a look at the 10 year, we're hanging out at a really key level here. 1.75 is a real key level. Uh, we want to see what happens to this. If this thing falls apart and starts to uh, go down, then I would say that would be bad news for stocks. If this holds and we continue to see rate, uh, rates rise, then I would say that that's telling us that the broader stock market is overall healthy and that we're just really looking at a short term correction. Um, also, with uh, continued rising interest rates, things like energies and financials are great sectors uh, to be looking for opportunities in. Uh, but we're going to want to watch this key level here. We've hung out at this level for three weeks now. These are weekly candlesticks. And so uh, I'm expecting probably a little hangout in this region, uh, potentially for a little bit longer, and then most likely a break to the upside. I'd expect at least a break up to about 2%, and it'll be really interesting to see if we can get above that 2% level um, because we've got some pretty pretty good uh, support there. and. Um, We'll want to see if we can get above that or not. Also taking a look at the 30, we broke out of a, a bit of a wedge pattern here, hanging out just above that, right above 2%. But by and large, we've sort of been in this trading range other than the COVID crash uh, since 2019. And so uh, we'll see how this continues to develop as well. Uh, one of the key things that I really like to look at is the yield curve. And uh, so what this shows is it's the 10 year divide, uh, minus uh, by the two year. And uh, what that shows us is essentially what banks, um, how they make their money is on the yield curve. And so when you have a rising yield curve, it's typically good for financial sectors. Uh, when you have a declining yield curve, it's typically bad for the financial markets. Um, we've seen, while we're seeing rising interest rates, which typically is a strong indicator for financial markets, we are seeing the yield curve actually uh, decline. And when we can, if we actually get down to the zero ratio, that typically is a sign of a uh, of some bad news. Uh, if, if you go back in history, you can see every time essentially we've got down to the zero ratio, uh, we've had some problems in the market. Uh, not necessarily expecting that in the short term. Uh, we want to see if it can hold this 200-day moving average support. Uh, if it continues to break down from there, uh, then you know we could possibly see some continued selling pressure. So we'll want to watch this pretty closely in the coming weeks. Uh, another ch chart that I really like looking at that gives me some really uh, good uh, ideas as far as what the risk appetite is out there is the high yield corporate bonds. Uh, essentially, if we go back, I've looked at this throughout history, and any time uh, under the weekly candlestick chart we break down below those moving averages, it's typically bad news for the for the markets. Uh, we can go back literally years, uh, I think all the way back through the financial crisis, and essentially every time we break down below these moving averages, uh, the stocks stock market typically sells off. And so you can see that we're clearly below those levels again. It really just happened this week, so this is a pretty uh, new development uh, this week specifically in the markets and so we'll want to watch that uh, if we get a confirmation next week with an, another weekly candlestick below those levels uh, and that would tell me to be even more cautious in the markets right now. There's not a lot I want to be long if the HYG is below those moving averages. Let's take a look at US oil. Uh, oil is continuing to do well even in, a, even in a choppy and volatile market. Uh, we're seeing oil at about 87 a barrel. 
uh, and I'm expecting it to continue to rise. That's one of the reasons I'm really bullish on energy. Some of the few sectors that I actually have long stocks in right now is in the energy space. And uh, the big reason for that is I'm expect, expecting this chart to continue to go up. Uh, I would look for oil to at least get up to 107 a barrel, which is another 24% move from here. And it uh, wouldn't sh shock me at all if we got all the way up to 124, 42 a barrel. That would be a Fibonacci extension level uh, from a previous high uh, that would get us to about 124 a barrel, which would be another 42, 43% upside um, in oil. And so if we're seeing those kind of movements in oil, uh, obviously oil stocks are going to do great. And so those are, those are sectors that I've been closely watching and buying call options on, uh, getting long positions uh, on, uh, on stocks and really continuing to watch this closely. As long as oil holds above this key level here, probably right around 84, 85 dollars a barrel, uh, then I'm gonna continue to stay bullish in the oil sector until we see uh, a reversal. Let's take a quick look at the Shanghai Composite Index for China. Uh, while the U.S. has been selling off quite a bit recently, so has China, and this week has been no different. In fact, we've seen a pretty significant sell-off this week. Uh, we're looking at probably almost 5% in the uh, Chinese stock market just this week alone and so they're lo certainly looking like they're having some issues over there as well so I would not be looking to uh, go long on too many Chinese stocks at the moment taking a look at the DXY the dollar index as well uh, we had a huge move in the dollar this week uh, typically when the when the dollar is going down it's a uh, uh, tailwind for stocks when the dollar is rising it's typically a headwind for stocks uh, we are up against a key uh, resistance level here right around 97.75 so we'll want to watch that closely next week and see what the dollar does uh, it might kind of hang out there uh, it could break that level of course and, and if we do break this level I would expect it to get at least to the hundred dollar mark uh, if we uh, hold this as resistance then we could continue to see the dollar uh, we could see the dollar turn over again, which we did just about a month or two ago, uh, and we saw some actual uh, sell-off in the dollar. So it's right now we're just kind of trading in this range. It'll be really interesting to see how this shakes out, uh, but a rising dollar is typically not good news for the stock market. Let's take a quick look at gold and silver. Uh, gold uh, almost broke out of a wedge pattern this week, but then failed and fell down pretty hard. Um, so I'm not interested in trading gold right now or gold miners at all until we see a break above this wedge pattern that really started back in July of 2020, which was the peak of the gold price uh, after that real explosive move. When we, when we zoom out, you can still see that we're in a, a bullish uh, scenario here in the long term. You know, we had a big, huge move up and then we've held through this range. As long as gold holds the 158 uh, on the GLD, I'm not worried about gold in the long term. I think it's still going to hold up well and do well once it breaks out of this wedge, but I don't want to be trading it until we get out of this wedge pattern. Same thing with silver over here. A little different slope on the wedge pattern, but same story. Until we get through this wedge pattern and start to show some upside uh, potential, uh, I'm not really interested in looking at silver either. Uh, let's wrap things up with the VIX. So the VIX obviously was a big story of the week. Uh, we saw the VIX spike out almost to 39 uh, on the VIX. Uh, that was the highest level we'd seen since November of 2020. So that was a pretty significant move up. And since then, we have seen it pull back. We're all the way down to about 27 and a half now. Uh, anything above 30 uh, has been typically a pretty uh, um, volatile and usually a bad thing for the market. And uh, we're below that now. So it'll be interesting to see if we, uh, what we do next week, we might be chopping around in the 25 to 30 VIX range, or maybe we get below that 25 level again. Uh, but we'll want to watch that closely. Also, uh, a great chart for ratios that I like looking at is the VIX divided by the VIX six months. So what this does is it takes the current VIX levels, divides it by uh, the, the anticipated VIX uh, rates for six months out. And so when we see that level typically get above this one level, then that often tells us that the bottom is close to being in, uh, in a sell-off. And so we saw a big VIX spike up here. Uh, and then we're starting to see a reversal and so when you go back through history every time we get up to above that one and then reverse That's typically a sign that the bottom is in or close to in now um, I still think that there's a good chance we see another five or ten percent sell-off And so I wouldn't take this individual chart as a sign to go in and load up on long positions right now But I think it is a good indicator telling us that uh, the, that Most likely we're not looking at a, a real aggressive crash coming and that we're just probably looking at another maybe five or ten percent move to the downside and then I'd expect a resumption of the bull market. 
All right, well, that's all I got this week for you guys. So thanks for tuning in, and I will see you next week.